welcome back. And I'd like to thank everybody who corrected me in the film about do we trust science and said this because it's so true. The majority of you said we trust science, but we don't trust scientists. Thank you for correcting that. And that's the problem. So today, let's just continue on this theme of trust. And I want you to explore something which, as always on this channel, is slightly controversial. But this today is so interesting and reveals so much about the way we're all being told stuff and the way that we think. So it's the hot potato of climate change. But this time from a different angle, which is very interesting and very revealing. So here's my statement. We've all expressed a genuine distrust of scientists, but we kind of like science. And I want to explore that in context of this climate change thing. So today we're going to look at just one aspect of climate change, and that's CO2, and see if the scientists are actually lying to us. Remember, we did a film about DDT and Silent Spring, how it was killing the birds, but we were sold by scientists that it was going to feed Africa. But it was revealed, and this was a major shift in human thinking, it was revealed that, of course, the scientists who were telling you we we're going to feed the hungry were actually working for chemical manufacturers making these pesticides and herbicides. And a lot of people have come up with other very important things that have happened, like thalidomide. I mean, yeah, good example. So I hear the argument all the time, keyboard warriors, saying that climate change comes from these damned scientists that can't be trusted. But hang on just a second. Ooh, the scientists that can't be trusted are the ones working for large vested interests. So my question to you today is, what exactly is the industry that's paying off the scientists who are, in some people's opinion, pushing the climate change argument? And this is my opinion. There isn't one. It's clever lobbying by the anti-climate change people who have used your genuine and honest disbelief in the corrupt scientists to say all scientists, including the ones doing genuine research on climate change, are just liars. And that's really clever because it's building on your beliefs and your instincts that they're all out to get you. And is that really true? So today I'm going to share with you something I find really interesting. This is the science of CO2. And so this is step one to understanding the climate change debate without being influenced by the hysterical pro-climate change people and the even more hysterical anti-climate change people. On this channel, I want you to understand the science. We live in an amazing place. Often described as the Goldilocks position in our solar system. Not too hot and not too cold. A perfect 93 million miles from our star called the Sun. 
The sun is the source of all our energy. Energetically radiating power into space. It bathes our planet in forms of radiation right across the spectrum. Infrared, we perceive as heat, visible light, and high energy particles. As we orbit our star, we trace the seasons in a cosmic dance. But we are a long way from the sun. By the time its energy hits Earth, it would only heat our planet to minus 18 degrees Celsius. And at night, without its warming rays, we would drop to a numbing minus 259 degrees Celsius. But we are lucky. Earth has an atmosphere that contains gases and molecules that absorb infrared energy before it's reflected and lost back into space. Other wavelengths are free to leave our atmosphere and continue their cosmic journey. The largest heat energy collectors are clouds made of water vapor. But since the Industrial Revolution, mankind has started burning fossil fuels. First coal, then oil, now gas. Turning these fuels into heat and power liberates the carbon they are made of in the form of carbon dioxide. In the last 200 years, we have burnt so much that we have increased the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere. It is still a tiny amount, but it acts as an amplifier, trapping heat and so producing more clouds. All of this is slowly raising our planet's temperature. Melting ice and so causing sea level rise. This is science, not speculation. So I guess I can't draw polar bears. I had another go. What do you think, any better? Not really. Hey, the final one. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.